On a recent visit to San Diego, Sarah and I decided to visit the decommissioned aircraft carrier, the USS Midway, now a museum. The experience proved fascinating, and we spent several hours exploring the massive ship. And when we say massive, you can get lost. Chances are that you've been one of the 1.1 million visitors to see the ship each year. Welcome to this episode of History Hunters. We're in San Diego, California, aboard the USS Midway. I'm going to take a tour of the ship. USS Midway was the longest serving aircraft carrier in the 20th century. Named after the climatic Battle of Midway of June 1942, Midway was built in only 17 months, but missed World War II by week when commissioned on September 10, 1945. Christening the ship in 1945 was Barbara Cox, who was the daughter of Ohio Governor James Cox. The USS Midway was the United States' longest-serving aircraft carrier of the 20th century from 1945 to 1992. Approximately 200,000 sailors served aboard the carrier, known for several naval aviation breakthroughs as well as several humanitarian missions. It was the only carrier to serve the entire length of the Cold War and beyond. These look familiar. Well, here's Ronald and George. the chains that go down to the anchors. This is the executive officer's headquarters. And I noticed over here, it says, I didn't see any EXO smile very much when I was aboard. The skipper looked to him to make sure the running of the ship and the conduct of the crew was up to standards. And uh, he has one of better bedrooms here on the ship. It's on TV. Special ceremony. Entertaining dignitaries. Oh, it's from the Toledo. It's how the officers got to eat. Pretty nice down here. And right over here, 
even better. And keep in mind this ship was in Japan for all of the 1980s. I haven't seen one of these projectors since I was in high school. Actually, grade school because it was replaced by reel-to-reel -reel videotape. Here's the barber shop. Be back in 15 minutes. They left a mess on the floor. Jeffrey Archer. Not a penny more, not a penny less. Penny less. So if you had a mustache, you couldn't have it beyond the corners of your mouth. Sarah's almost cock on her head. I would if I didn't watch out. This guy's got a big job ahead of him. I don't know about you, but I think this guy is probably in trouble or something. He's got to scrub the floor with a toothbrush. So this is the Command Master Chief. And that guy right there kind of looks like Daniel Inouye, the U.S. Senator from Hawaii. It does, doesn't it? Officers pass it on. And down there, it's a bomb. Get a little chummy there with him, aren't you? Or maybe, maybe he's getting chummy with you. Kick it back. <laughs> so as you can tell, we are on the flight deck of the USS Midway. We're gonna check out some of the planes up here. Uh, helicopters. I understand that there's a helicopter up here that actually recovered a Apollo capsule out of the ocean. Initially, when they built this ship, it was a straight runway here, just a straight uh, pathway for the planes, and they modified it, and made a, an approach this way, so the planes could come in sideways for safety reasons. The Midway flight deck saw a dramatic rescue of many South Vietnamese who fled their country as it fell to communist North Vietnam in 1975. On April 29, 1975, South Vietnamese Air Force Major Boeing Lai stole a tiny two-seat Cessna and 01 Bird Dog to board his wife and their five children in a desperate attempt to reach Americans. The Midway was evacuating stranded Americans there as well as friendly Vietnamese during the mission, dubbed Operation Frequent Wind. During the evacuation, the deck of the Midway was crowded with helicopters, and the crew was apprehensive about the tiny Cessna landing. The pilot dropped a note to ask the crew to move the helicopters aside so that he could land, and that he only had an hour's worth of fuel left. After $10 million worth of helicopters were pushed into the sea to clear the deck, the captain turned his ship into the wind to prepare for a fixed-wing landing. Boeing successfully landed the plane as sailors ran towards it to grab it in case the momentum was enough to send it over the side, but the bird dog stayed where it had stopped. 
Cheers rang out and sailors clapped while the family walked onto the deck. The bird dog flown that day now hangs in the National Naval Aviation Museum in Pensacola, Florida. We're parked way down there, that mess. We really have two navies, if you think about it. You see across the, the, the bay there, the Abraham Lincoln, it's an operating nuclear uh, carrier, and there are no planes on because the Airedale side went home. They went to Miramar, Lemoore, with the island of Seattle, or wherever their home base is, and they do their training. So all the 3,000 enlisted and everybody that maintained the aircraft come off when the ship's in port. Later on, They'll do their training, they'll come back little by little, work in the ship for their training, and then when it gets ready to leave on deployment, they all come back, all eight squadrons come back at basically the same time, and they come on as an air wing. And this is the senior guy, the air boss. So what the compartment you're in right now is, is, is first of all, it's a tower, exactly, exactly like the tower at Lindbergh Field. They control the aircraft up to 2,500 feet and five miles. All right. Now at sea, they control everything, the whole sky, within 100 miles. Easy. So what we can say about the Midway is it's a terribly complex machine. I don't even know how you would even engineer such a marvel like that. Incredibly complicated, incredibly heavy, incredibly sophisticated, and it was all built during World War II. So I want to thank you for joining us on this episode of History Hunters. I have a really, really impressed by what I saw today. So if you ever have time to come to San Diego, come and check it out. Thanks.